Yes, once again we visit the source of modern and innovative thinking in education, the National Association of Independent Schools. Or NAIS. What wonderful insights might we gain today from some well-meaning educators? Grading for equity. What it is, why it matters, how it transforms schools and classrooms. Equity. In the modern parlance, equity means equality of outcome. So when I read grading for equity, I imagine a system wherein there is no fail state, a system that attempts to produce students with a self-belief of achievement and advancement without actually challenging students to achieve or advance on their own merits. A system that attempts to prevent hurt feelings. At least, that's what I imagine. Let's see what our experts have to say about the concept. As deeply as we all are committed to equity um, in the way that we design our curriculum and in our pedagogy, many of us inadvertently are undermining that because we are using grading practices that are traditional and actually end up perpetuating uh, achievement and opportunity gaps. Grading practices that are traditional, whatever that means, and perpetuate achievement and opportunity gaps. Okay, well, you're going to have to explain to me how the traditional grading practices are either flawed or insufficient, and what constitutes achievement and opportunity gaps. So, proceed. We're all here taking care of kids, and some of the grading practices that we've had in the past aren't doing that. They're actually reiterating kind of the achievement gap amongst our students. Yes, okay, but, um, how? There are ways to grade more equitably, more accurately, um, resistant to bias, and more motivational that can actually counteract um, many of the traditional practices and align our, our equity work with our grading. Profiles in purposeless repetition. I need more details. Please. Our grading practices are vestiges of the Industrial Revolution when we were trying to sort kids, we were trying to control them and manage behavior, um, and we weren't trying to educate every child. So you want uncontrolled, unmanaged behavior from children in the classroom? And sort kids? You mean like figuring out which students are stronger or weaker in some areas than others? those that need more attention individually, or might even be tasked with helping their peers? And not educating every child. I'm not sure what that means. By continuing to use those traditional practices, we are punishing students who have fewer resources and have been historically underserved, and we're rewarding kids who have more resources. And what we want to do is have our grading practices align with the reason why we went into this work, which is to counteract those historical inequities and give every kid a chance. Okay, I feel like you've made the same sales pitch twice with successive statements. How about some details? What does grading for equity look like as compared to the traditional practices, of which you haven't even specified yet? The current way that we're grading, kind of overarchingly, uh, they're not motivational, right? Right. They're, they're not motivating kids to, to think about how they want to learn and what they want to learn next and, and push themselves into new, new areas. Instead, they, they stifle that learning. Wait, wait. How the students want to learn? What they want to learn next? Do teachers not teach? Do teachers not set the curriculum? If the students already knew how to learn, if they already knew what to learn, they wouldn't be students anymore, would they? Is this just some grand plan to reduce teachers down even further towards being nothing more than glorified babysitters? Grades treat students um, like they are commodities, and we treat grades like they're commodities. So um, instead of thinking about students as um, an A or a B student, we're, we're really trying to focus on the whole child. Commodities. You'd have to be a pretty heartless human being, let alone a teacher, to look at students as commodities. 
The grading system is not a judgment call on someone's worth as a person. It's an estimation of skill, knowledge, and ability in the various academic subjects. The teacher is there as a guide and mentor to humanize the education process with the grading system as a way to track and critique progress. They make it sound like teachers are inhuman automatons who only abide by a grading system and have no other personality or interaction with students on a human level. And focus on the whole child. We're really trying to focus on the whole child. What does that even mean? What grading practices are more equitable? Yes, okay, give me some details. What utopian mechanisms are you advocating for? So the grade really should be based solely on the student's level of academic mastery. Uh, say that again? So the grade really should be based solely on the student's level of academic mastery. And how is that not the traditional method of grading? I I'm, I'm confused. How well do they know the subject? How well do they know the content and skills and standards? And not include extraneous information like, did they do their homework or are they bringing their notebook to class and are they doing extra credit and are they raising their hand? So you want to remove behavioral or responsibility expectations from students. You want to do away with homework and preparedness and attentiveness and active participation as things that teachers should try to instill in their students. That is equitable. Got it. Because all those things are susceptible to our own implicit biases, where we are judging and maybe misperceiving uh, whether or not students are learning, and instead we want to be focused only on have they learned the material and at what level. So it's a minority report process for teachers? You inherently expect that they will be treating kids unequitably based on their behavior, and so you just want to toss everything out but the hard and fast grades? And here I thought you wanted to focus on the whole child and not just the academic output. So are all the responsible kids just going to have to suffer the unruly and irresponsible kids then? Is the quality of their education an acceptable sacrifice to ensure the teacher doesn't risk hurting anyone else's feelings? So in addition to not including student behaviors in a grade, Okay, when are student behaviors included in the grading process of academics? I mean, I remember from kindergarten and elementary school that we had notes and grades on classroom behavior on our report cards because we were little kids. But even then, those were separate from our actual academic progress ratings. Does the traditional method instruct teachers to add student behavior to the evaluation of subject competency? Ways that we can make grading more equitable is to be more transparent and explicit with what our expectations are. Many times, teachers in their head know what an A-quality essay is or an A-quality answer to you know, understanding the quadratic equation. But what we want to do is be so explicit with students that they don't have to just try and earn points. Yes, sure, clear expectations. That sounds fine, but, um, how is that not part of a traditional classroom system? There are right answers and wrong answers. There's correctly demonstrating a grasp of a concept or subject matter, and then there's demonstrably not understanding it. So, are our speakers then proponents of standardized testing? Uh, and that explicitness for students makes it more accessible. It gives them more agency um, and more trust in the teacher because now it's not the student who's trying to please the teacher all the time. It's the teacher and the student are on the same page trying to hit some external target. Okay, I'll admit, it's been quite a while since I was in school. But A, 
A kid is almost always going to try and please a good teacher, or even a bad teacher, because the teacher is the authority figure and the arbiter of success in the classroom. And B, if you're taking away a teacher's ability to set behavioral standards in the classroom, how can there be any transparency of expectation? If they assign homework, but are not allowed to penalize kids who don't do it on time, what does that say to the other kids who followed the instructions? I am I'm getting some very mixed messages here. What that means for educators um, and administrators, actually, is that we actually have to unlearn a lot of the things that we learned about ourselves being graded when we were younger and how we've been grading um, since we've become educators, right? Right. In that space, we, we you know, I, I would say that I am even susceptible to being the, the I call it the point fairy. The point fairy? And at the end of the term, you think about like which kids are, which kids have been working really hard but may not have performed as well as um, you you believe they they could have. Didn't perform as well as you believe they could have. Would this be something you only realize at the end of the term? Were you not paying attention to their progress over the course of the term to see where they may have needed particular guidance towards a better outcome? Golly, if only there was some kind of objective system of measurement of skill that could be employed. You know, to to have an idea of where a student's academic strengths and weaknesses are over the course of the term, so you're not surprised by the outcome by the end of the term. (laughs) Oh well. And then all of a sudden you sprinkle little points on and that C goes to a B um, because you're trying to make a kid feel better and you're trying to motivate them. But what you're doing is motivating them extrinsically instead of intrinsically. So a lot of it's going to be challenging our own notions of what grading is and being okay with being uncomfortable about unlearning the things that we knew and learning and thinking about ways to, to, to grade students in a way that truly shows what they can do. What? what? I'm confused. You say you've been susceptible to being the point fairy by artificially raising kids' grades out of, well, pity, which entirely undermines the purpose of a grading system, and, might I add, is possibly a fireable offense that you've just confessed to. But then you say that your weakness is a result of established notions of learning which you need to unlearn. So, you need to unlearn your conscious choice to cheat on behalf of your students, <laughs> and not on behalf of your record of accomplishment or your reputation as a teacher, of course. Of course! <sighs> I'm not even sure what is going on at this point. You know, kind of anecdotally, you know, I... I changed a grading practice that I that I did, and all of a sudden my classroom was less stressful. Um, kids seemed to be a little bit more happy um, coming to class. They were excited about the content because they weren't so worried about a grade being dropped upon them. Um, they were looking forward to earning into that space. Well, hell. If I knew I could come to work and be assured a paycheck without actually having to do my job, I'd probably be ecstatic to show up as well. Are you kidding me? How can a school build support among faculty and parents for a shift to more equitable grading practices? Translation. How the heck do you sell the idea of abandoning behavioral and academic expectations of students in your class without having your fitness as an educator questioned all the way to the unemployment office? Well, I await the answer with bated breath. I think it requires um, courageous leaders of a school to normalize a conversation about grading. (laughs) Do we also have to synergize the workflow paradigm in order to upscale our emprise objectives? Nonsense gobbledygook. Right now, it's very difficult to broach that topic among teachers and administrators because of power dynamics and really unfamiliarity with even talking about it. 
or perhaps a reflexive disbelief that you want to effectively nullify the role of a teacher in the classroom because you're afraid of hurting kids' feelings with grades. Or, more likely, you're afraid of being accused of one form of discrimination or another, depending on how some outside party decides to interpret your grading decisions? Maybe. So I think they need to find ways to, to begin the conversation with articles or books or videos and some way to start normalizing and targeting that this is actually important enough and underdeveloped in our work together that it's worth taking the time and worth the uncomfortableness that, it, that this is going to bring. So you're going to have to take faculty and parents through a process of education on why grading, personal responsibility, and self-control are negative aspects to running a classroom. Well, will you be giving out homework to the faculty and parents on this? If so, will you expect them to complete it on time? You're asking somebody to stop doing something that they've been doing or has been done to them even um, for their whole educational career. I mean, that's uncomfortable and, and that's going to make people have to rethink a lot of what they have been doing and what they will do moving forward. So it's gonna take time, it's gonna take some tough conversations. Um, but like Joe said, some, some courageous leaders I think could uh, really push this along. Courageous is not the word that occurs to me as I listen to our speakers. I think the more apt term would be cowardice. We're not trying to do what's nice, which grading is nice. It's easy. It, we can kind of make it fit into these boxes. Instead, we're trying to do what's right. Oh, you can make it fit all right, especially when you artificially inflate students' grades to a point that makes you feel better about yourself. But now you're trying to do what's right. Right by whom, exactly? We know this is the right way to do things. It's, we know what's wrong. We know what, why past practices can be harmful to students. And now we need to do what's right, which is rethinking how we grade students and, and moving forward in, in, in a world that can be a lot more equitable. What is right? What is more equitable? Two teachers that are so scared of setting a standard and holding students to those standards in order to discover where their strengths or weaknesses lie in academia, and then working to guide and mentor them to improvement. You know, to teach. But our teachers don't want to teach. They want to corral students into a pen, line them up at the same trough of false accomplishment, and just keep dumping in slop until the school day is over, and then send them on their way with a participation ribbon, all weighted exactly the same so that no feelings are hurt no challenges are encountered, and no goals are set. You know, equity. And that philosophy on education is grade A horse hockey. As always, thank you for watching.